Welcome back to day four of Vlogmas. I can't believe it's only three weeks till Christmas and I had a really good plan for uh, Mabel this morning. I wanted this video to focus on heel training, which we're gonna get to in just a second. But this morning I had a really fun I plan of uh, going to the park to do some socialization, go for a nice walk and start building the foundation blocks of some recall. Then we were gonna go and walk up the high street uh, in the local town, get used to busy environments. And then we went for breakfast and had a coffee at the coffee shop. Now I did all that, but in the rush of the morning, I completely forgot to pick my camera up and left it on the side. So unfortunately, I didn't vlog that. So this video isn't going the way I planned already, but we've just got back. Mabel's having a little bit of a sleep now. Crate training's going brilliantly, by the way. She's, uh, oh, you just waking up. Hello, you just woke up, Missy. You've been fast asleep in there for ages. Oh, you're coming out now. Hello, are you saying hello? What is it? What is it? You're gonna need a wee now, you just woke up. So she's gonna need a wee. I'm gonna take her out for a wee, but crate training is going brilliantly. This morning went absolutely amazingly. I might chat a little bit more about that in a second, but my plan was, was to wait for her to wake up and then it's lunchtime and then we're gonna do some real good work on heel training. Uh, because she's so smart and so intelligent, I'm really able to push the obedience work quicker than you might do with any other breed. But um, that's what we're gonna focus on today and talking about how to get the foundation of heel training nailed right from a young age, even as young as this so that they're just heel walking throughout their entire lives and then all you have to do is just build up the distraction level to have a perfect heel from a really young age. What have you got there? Is that Mr. Sharky? Is that Mr. Sharky? You're not ready to come out yet. You stay in there for as long as you want, okay? You and Mr. Sharky have a little bit of a cuddle. And by the way, um, if you're not already, make sure you come and follow us on Instagram because we're doing loads more pictures and videos and Instagram stories over there. It's Will and Mabel IG. Uh, the link, as always, is down in the description. So in some of the previous episodes, you've seen me already start to incorporate some heel work into the generic obedience routine that I do all the time. And that's going really well already. And the idea of that is teaching your dog what it is. And this goes for a puppy, an adult dog, or a rescue dog. Any dog of any age can learn heel really quickly, actually, if you just follow this step-by-step -step process. And obviously, if you want all more information on the exact step-by-step -step guide, that's all broken down in my Perfect Puppy course. Again, the link will be in the description. But once you've got Got your dog off lead to understand that heel means a position obviously either on your left side right side most people will want it on their left hand side at that point you can start to add the lead now we want to always be adding the lead nice and loose and leads are an interesting thing obviously we always need them and leads are a brilliant tool but leads can also be a nightmare for a lot of people especially in terms of aggression Right, my wife's arms are killing her because I'm so much taller and holding the camera up is killing her arms. So I'm going to go and get the tripod, we'll be right back. Right, your arm's better now, is that better? Yeah. Probably be a better shot for you guys as well. So I forgot where I was, but I know I was talking about leads and how much of a problem leads can be when not used well. Leads are a communication tool, but if your dog is always on a taut lead, you're only ever really communicating one thing and then that contributes to so many different problem behaviors. So you always want your lead to be loose and then that way you can use your lead in different manners to communicate with your dog. Not necessarily just correcting them, but just simple different communications. We'll talk about that more in detail on another video but that's why a lot of you have asked why is it I don't have a long line lead on her or when I'm just socializing her out on a field or if we're doing any exercise why don't I have a lead on and that's because I want her to associate a lead with heel work at all times and that's why we start from such a young age I want her to know that if she's on her lead this is an experience where me and her are working and I want her in this position loose lead just to the left of me so when you've got the heel position sorted and the dog understands what that means, all we're gonna do is, so I'm still using positive reinforcement, I'm still using treats for her to pop her head through the slip lead because I want her to, again, to really associate this with a positive thing, not just a correction tool. I'm just trying to get into a crate, look. So all I'm gonna do is with the lead, loose lead, I'm gonna get her to put her own head through with this treat. Yes, yes. So she understands that every time that that thing gets tightened around her neck, that it's a good thing, it's not a bad thing, it's not to worry about. And then like I mentioned in the last video, when we get to this stage, I use a carabiner, I hook that through the lead end, 
and then with the mic you can either hook it to your belt loop or I hook it onto my treat pad. Now that means I'm hands free, but that I'm still attached to the dog and that way through communication I'm not inadvertently adding anything that I don't want the dog to understand and that way I'm building up a basis for off leash heel uh, when she's a little bit older which is what I want it to be. I want her to understand if we're walking and I want her by my heel she walks to heel 100% of the time no matter what the distractions are until I tell her she can break and this kind of builds that foundation. So then we just go through indoors no distractions at this stage and we go through that exact same routine. So what I'm going to get her to do Heel, yes, and she finds that heel position. Then all I'm going to do is we're going to go back and heel, yes, good, heel, yes. So it's exactly the same exercise as we were doing off lead, we're now just adding the lead to it. Heel, and we can go in different, good, heel, yes, good. And the principle is once you've got that foundation, we're marking with heel when they're in the right position, we're giving them a reward, we're telling them that they're a good girl, good boy, good dog, whatever your reinforcement markers are, and we're just really reinforcing what that position of heel means, and then we're adding in space between, so to start with, you might stand on one spot and just do 90 degree turns, then you might do 180 degree turns and 270, then add in one step, two step, three steps before they get the treat, as long as they stay in that heel position. So as you've just seen, we've got to a point now where I can quite comfortably be in the kitchen or in the living room walking back and forward and she's looking for me for direction, she's engaged in the treat and now we're at this point where she's got heel down, we're going to take it outside. So we're going to start with going outside into kind of like our car park area where it is outside, so there's a little bit more distractions and then we're just going to slowly build it up and build it up until she gets to a point where it's too much distraction and then we know we're going to stop there. We're going to really solidify that layout and then add the distractions and add the distractions and that can be over weeks or months to get to a perfect heel under any situation but once you've got the foundation layer built inside under no distractions heel work is easy and heel's so important if you've got a dog especially giant breeds like the breeds that we love and talk about on the canine show or here on will and mabel it's so important to have a dog that will walk to heel because that transforms a walk where the dog's pulling you that's a miserable experience and a chore and something you don't look forward to into something that is the highlight of the day of being able to walk a giant powerful breed under complete control. Right, so I'm going to voice over this bit so I can give you some really quite clear guidance on what it is that I'm doing. So as you can see, we're kind of doing exactly the same routine that I was just doing indoors, but we're doing it outside. So this is what I'm talking about. I got getting that foundation layer. Mabel now 100% knows that heel means I want you by my left side. my by my left side. So what she needs to do now is understand that if I say that down the busiest high street on Oxford Street in London or in my living room, it's exactly the same thing. So what we're doing is we're bringing it out, and as you can see, we're just kind of doing in the same routine i add in the occasional sit just because it kind of breaks it up a little bit it adds another layer a bit of complexity and i use sit all the time for things like crossing the road but as you can see i'm just getting into a sit we're getting into the right heel position and then we're moving forward and like you heard when i was doing it inside i'm constantly marking these behaviors with good girl good good heel good and then slowly withdrawing the treat so that she only gets a treat every now and again because obviously you don't want to be out for a walk giving her a treat every two steps but we start with these baby steps getting a treat every few steps constant reassurance and constant praise and once they have it nailed as we gradually increase the distractions we also gradually decrease the amount of times that we treat them and the amount of times we have to reinforce and give the command of heel to a point where they know that at all times I tripped over a little bit there but at all times you know that the dog knows that if we are on the lead we're healing so here if you see over in the distance over the road there's actually a dog and I hadn't noticed it until there there I noticed that there was a dog so I was a little bit confused as to why it was that she was not paying attention to me but here 
I could have corrected her here, uh, but I'd be setting her up for fail. I could be repeating the term heel, 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 but I'd be setting her up to fail and letting her know that it's excusable to not have to listen to me. So what I did was I waited. I'm not saying anything to her here. And there, boom, the second that I got her eye contact and she looked back to me, I used heel and then reinforced it. And we're building up that concept of, I want you to look to me to direction. Now, as she gets a little bit older, I will expect that of her, whether there's distractions or not, but we don't set dogs up to fail. That's a huge huge point at this age we set them up for success and we show them what it is that we want and we try and ignore what we don't and you have to be patient at times like that this is a we're out for a walk we're on the road we're layering up these distractions this is quite very advanced work even without there being too much traffic but the fact that like then there was a dog over the road and she needs to learn that she gets reinforced and what I want from her was even though there was something interesting to look at I wanted her to pay attention to me so we're patient and we're reinforcing that and as you can see we're already at a stage at 10 weeks old where heel work is coming on an absolute treat and now we just need to layer it up so as you can see heel work is going very well into little moo into it yes you're a good girl yes you're a good girl you're a good girl no climbing ah, ah, good yes good so yeah so she's just woke up that gets her going a little bit so we're going to do a little bit of free play now ah, ah and burn off some of this energy finish off kind of the formal training that we're doing today and then we're going to go into the afternoon I'm probably going to go around and see my parents this evening um and let her have a run with sully just because they're best mates and really enjoy that so yeah that's kind of where we're at with heel work and i hope you took something from that if you need any help with things like heel work or anything as always my perfect puppy course is down linked in the description box below i'm showing you as much as i can here on the channel so you can pick up bits and bobs but if you want like a really structured step-by-step -step plan dedicated to how you do it and why we do it so you can really understand the theory to really separate yourself as a canine leader as an excellent one not just an average one that's what that course is for so i hope you're enjoying the content so far i hope you're enjoying kind of these daily little updates little mabel's coming on really well so i think tomorrow i'm going to do one really dedicated to crate training to give a really structured process for puppies adult dogs newly adopted dogs of how you can make them absolutely love the crate so that you know that they're in a really safe fun uh, environment so your house stays safe they're safe and removing separation anxiety so like i say that's probably one of my main fears heal recall sit all of that is a breeze it's easy that's the easy stuff it's things like uh, over wariness with strangers aggression towards dogs separation anxiety they're the things that require a little bit more finesse so that's what i'm going to really dive deeply in tomorrow so i hope you're enjoying these videos if you are give them a thumbs up subscribe if you're new here and i can't wait to see you guys tomorrow for another episode of vlogmas